Hi, I'm Sherrod Pitton and welcome to BFM Headlines. Let's start with the highlights. The Trungganu government plans to parade Muslims who skip Friday prayers around town in hearses as a penalty. Hashtag compulsory piety. And is it the War of the Roses at the Najib family home? Four out of the five sons of the late Prime Minister Tun Abdul Raza released a statement on Tuesday dismissing talk of a large inheritance left by their father. They say that their father had a reputation for frugality and integrity. They were responding to a statement by the Prime Minister's office to the New York Times with allegations that the Prime Minister's family has massive wealth. The Prime Minister's office said it was a matter of legacy, i.e. Daddy left me millions. The Banda brothers seem to disagree. Meanwhile, the Obedient Wives Club Malaysia has rebranded itself. Why rebrand itself? Well, Jabatan Agama Islam Selangor had asked them to renounce their teachings and they followed dutifully. But now they're back with Rumah Poligami Indah Dari Tuhan. Hashtag Return of the Repressed. And finally, the Sharia High Court discharged Borders Bookstore Manager Nick Reiner, Nick Abdul Aziz. Remember, she's been caught up in a case over the uh, Irshad Manji book. Her statement outside the court, I stand here today not only for myself, but for all my colleagues, especially Muslims, who could face the same action by the religious authorities for merely doing our jobs. Hashtag my hero. But the story of the week, folks, is about love and hate in and for Party Islam in Malaysia. AMNO President Najib Razak declared that his party will not be contesting the Chempaka by-elections to focus on flood reconstruction efforts and also because of Malay unity. Now, past is the story of the week and we have to remember there are four points I think we need to understand about what's going on. First, Nick Aziz and his pro-Pakatan stance. The death of Nick Aziz sets up three competitions. One, a by-election for the state seat. Two, a competition for who becomes the next spiritual leader of the party. And three, really, a long-term decision about relationship with AMNO. Now, Nick Aziz was staunchly opposed to political cooperation with AMNO, partly for historical reasons. When PAS joined AMNO and Barisan National in the 70s, they suffered badly for it. The party split, they lost control of the state of Klantan. Uh, he's no longer there to stop talk and in fact moves to uh, strengthen ties and maybe uh, form a deeper alliance between the two parties. But what happens to uh, the party's current commitments to the Pakatan riot? Cooperation, of course, uh, between PAS and AMNO could be uh, helpful in terms of getting more funds for reconstruction, perhaps a return of Klantan's share of petroleum money, which has been denied to the state government. And then, of course, there is the Holy of Holies, the Islamic Holy Grail in Malaysian politics, Hudud, the law that in fact is on the books in Klantan, it was in the books in 1993, but hasn't been uh, allowed to be enacted because it needs compliance with federal constitutions. So changes at the federal level need to happen uh, before this Holy of Holies can be achieved. But let's rewind to the question of past and the increasingly open warfare between factions in the party ahead of the June party polls. This week, Deputy President Mat Sabu was accused of plotting the downfall of President Hadi Awang. It was a less than two minute long audio clip with him in a conspiratorial conversation. This comes after another expose of Dr. Hatha Ramli, an MP, allegedly planning the same through WhatsApp. The recording was uploaded to a Facebook page, which is popular with pro-Ulama groups in PAS. Rumors, leaked audio and video are just part of the very tactics in this party in fight. One more evidence of factionalism? Well, remember when Pakatan Riot was trying to remove its own MB in Slango? PAS wasn't playing ball, but then two assemblymen, from past, Shari Sangweb of Hulukalang and Hasno Bayuddin of Morib demonstrated that not everybody agreed with the leadership position. They sided with their colleagues in PKR and DAP. Another indication of deep tensions in the party is PASMA, a kotobaru based NGO that actively advocates strengthening ties with the Pakatan Rayat. Today's newspaper, Sina Harian, has exactly that story. Claims that PASMA is being funded by DAP, claims that are denied. And so, what's the end game? Is it the implementation of Hudud or the breakup of the Pakatan riot? And what will the implications for Barisan National be? Remember, Deputy Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin had promised to help with a technical committee on Hudud, and Mustafa Mohammad, Klantan State AMNO chief, also promised support for Hudud. Clearly, AMNO is egging PAS on. PAS, on its part, has pulled off the punching gloves and issued a stern warning to the DAP not to talk down to its leaders over the Hudud issue saying Pakatan Raya does not belong to the DAP. 
The DAP in response has reminded PAS of its commitments to the common policy platform of the Pakatan riot, which does not include Hudud. But all this might also rebound on the Barisan National, with commentators suggesting that the Malaysian Chinese Association MCA may leave Barisan National if AMNO pushes for Hudud. Looks like it's interesting times ahead for all of us, with factional fighting in PAS having ramifications far beyond the party. Thank you so much for joining us on BFM Headlines. If you have comments or questions, please put it in the box below and we'll try to respond to them. I'm Sharad Kutin, BFM 89.9.